So this is a 65 year old lady who has metastatic breast cancer and is presented with painless jaundice. She has biliary duct obstruction and also nausea and vomiting, which we were trying to figure out whether it was from peritoneal metastases or not. Further imaging and an attempt at Further imaging and attempt at ERCP last week uh, suggested there's a duodenal obstruction. Her stomach is full of food, so we've had her on a clear fluid diet now for three days. We're going to go ahead with a repeat ERCP with a view to stent the bile duct and put a duodenal stent in place. We'll see what her stomach looks like here now. nice and clear. She actually said she was swallowing the liquids without any problems, which suggests the obstruction isn't complete. It's more likely partial, which will allow me to get my catheter down there much better. As we go down here, it's pretty clear that there probably is extrinsic compression. I'll get myself situated fluoroscopically. You can see her nephrostomy sensor in place. We're just going to prepare a large syringe of dye. I'm pretty sure I can see the papilla. The papilla should be right around here. Hopefully I can get at the papilla. Yeah. I'm going to have a look and see what the duodenum actually looks like. I would need a regular tap. So I think right at the level of the scope, there is a tight stricture. She's mostly accounting for a lot of her symptoms. I don't want to put too much contrast in because I do want to be able to do a successful ERCT as well. And my rule for being able to get the scope through isn't as fixed as it is with the chronic obstruction. I find the duodenal obstruct patients can be obst clinically obstructed without needing without needing to be that tight. Sorry, a little pressure here now. I'm just trying to get my scope down in a somewhat stable position. And maybe try to find the papilla, although I'm getting a bit worried that I may not be able to see the papilla. So I can't access the biliary duct from below. On a rendezvous, I don't think it would be very successful because of the, the edema and the mass there. I'm not even sure they'd be able to get through percutaneously. So. I'm going to abandon the ERCP and place the duodenal stent. So similar to my colonic stent placements, I'm going to place the catheter with a wire down past, confirm that I'm in the duodenum, judge the length of the stricture to the stent that I want to place in a transpyloric position, and then go from there. So now we've got a cooked triple lumen straight catheter. We're going to place a tracer hybrid wire down. I like the hydrophilic tip and the stiffness of this. And the length is right. Now, I'll get my scope in position. I have my assistant strip the wire to me. I'll pass the catheter down. I like putting my duodenal stents in with a side viewing scope. For the most part, I find it just gives me control over the wire and the catheter. You do sacrifice a little bit in endoscopic view. Just strip it to me now, please. Now, endoscopically, I can see the beginning of the lumen. I know I'm in a fairly good spot. I can pass the catheter into that. And pass the wire under fluoroscopic control. The wire initially doesn't want to make that turn. So now it looks a lot happier. And I find whenever I'm putting a luminal stent, even though it certainly seems to be following the contour of the duodenum, and into where we injected contrast last. I always inject contrast and then air to confirm that I'm in the right spot. And it gives me a better idea of where... She's in a semi-supine position as well, but where... Okay, inject the eye there. 
You can see the plique circularis. I'm quite happy with where we are. Keep, trying, keep injecting. I'm just trying to get an idea of where the stricture actually starts. Probably right there. Can you save that? That's a good image. Can you inject some more there? Yeah. So I think we need to have the stop. We need to have the stent come around right around there. It either goes there or it goes, has to go right around that turn. And I think we're safe with respect to stricture. Inject some more right there, please. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go with a nine centimeter stent, please. So now I'm going to make sure I have lots of wire down to give us traction as we get around this. Almost done. Short exchange my wire now. I have so much wire to play with, I don't need to worry about those couple of centimeters, not like an ERCP. So now we got the catheter over the wire. I'm going to start advancing the catheter with my elevator lock. That's one of the advantages that I have in the side viewer. I can just advance against the lock wire. So you don't have to worry too much about traction. GG can just keep it steady for me. I'm still in the duty and I'll cap. And as I come out of the scope, I let my elevator down. I try not to work the elevator against it. I'm going to start fluoro again. See the stent coming there, Janine? Give me some more traction. You have tons of wire to work with. Tons of wire. Tons of wire. Good, okay, stop there. I'm going to back my scope back through the pylorus. And add the catheter in a fairly comfortable position. I'm looking for that yellow marker of the end of the stent. It should be right around there. So fluoroscopically, I'm not that concerned. There's a marker at the end of the stent right there. Fluoroscopically, I'm not that concerned about my end of the stent, but I will make some adjustments. There we go. I just want to make sure endoscopically it stays here. And I can see the stent through the cast. I'm going to pull my scope back a little bit more. Okay, open there. Start deploying. Doing a nice, nice steady progression. As she opens the stent, I start pulling the catheter back at a rate of about a centimeter every second or so. You can see fluoroscopically starting to release distally well before that turn. I don't like opening stents right into a turn. Hang on now. I have to make sure I have it. Yeah, I still have an endoscopic control. Good. Keep going. So what Gigi just did there is pull back the wire that allows you to recapture the stent. Wait, stop. We did it. We usually do that around the midpoint. Keep going. Yep. We're just about released. I want to make sure I'm transpyloric. There we go. That was quite nice. Still quite tight there distally. see how tight it is there distally. So we're just beyond the stricture by the looks of it. So what I do in these situations, I just let the catheter, we just sit here for another minute and let the stent expand. And over even the space of a couple minutes will allow the catheter to be pulled back through. I prefer to see the flare a little bit bigger in the distal end, but I think we're well past the stricture all the same. And if it shortens at all, it's probably going to shorten distally. catheters come through. I think my hope of actually putting my scope down there and actually seeing the papilla through that tight stricture isn't going to happen. You can see how tight it is. It's, it's still sub-millimeter there. 
Can you save that image, please, for me? What I'll do now is I'll take another slip tip of a syringe of dye. I go back into the stent, just into the duodenal cap area, and inject some contrast just to see it flow through. And over the space of about 48 hours, that will expand quite a bit more. happened there is we got a lot of reflux back to this, into the stomach and that's largely because I didn't want to push the scope right down to the uh, into the body of the stent and risk migrating it so so technically that case went, went, went quite well I, I've got a team that's quite used to the equipment and how to give traction and the deployment of the, uh, the evolution stent although with minimal amount of practice it's a steady rate of return rate of deployment you don't have that sudden jump that you need to adjust for um, unfortunately, the mass is right in the area of the second part of the duodenum. We were hoping it was going to be in the third part, so we couldn't identify the papilla and we couldn't perform the biliary drainage. Her, most of her symptoms are likely from her duodenal obstruction, so I think this will be effective palliation. We'll wait to see if she becomes symptomatic from her biliary obstruction before we do anything further there.